I started this channel based on a theory that we should be using mice smaller than what is comfortable, but with roughly 18 by 9 cm hands, I haven't really had a chance to see how small I could use. The Rosa Atheris could have been that mouse, but there are a few things I'd like to bring up, because as a fairly competitive FPS player, I would love to try this mouse with a few changes. I'll get to that later though. First, the materials are a textured but smooth plastic on top, and rubber on the sides. The grooves feel decent, and I haven't had any trouble with it slipping. I actually quite like the new materials they're using. The shape is basically a compact lance head, but with an Abyssus V2 style front. You can see how similar they are here, which is really good except for the back. The wings make it harder to grip. Other than that, it has curves in all the right places, including the front sides, but could probably use some deeper curves in the buttons. The top cover can be lifted off, revealing the batteries, and also you'll find the wireless adapter here, just behind the DPI button. With a gradual button slope and hum toward the back, it's a standard and good design for all grip styles, but it's mostly for small hands, with a height of about 3.4cm, a grip width of about 54 and a length of around 10 As I was saying, I think with some changes, this could have been the number one small mouse. I'd say it would suit palm grip for hands up to 16cm, claw grip up to 19 as long as you don't need the palm resting on the back, and fingertip up to 19.5. Ideally though, I'd say around 16 by 8.5 centimeters. Here it is next to some other razor mice, so you know the basic size of it. Definitely the smallest. The sensor is an optical, so putting it through the usual testing, it can handle rocket jumping quite well, and I can't make it spin out when moving it as fast as I can. It even handles the tilt slam test, so putting it on its side and slamming it down fast. Zooming in, this is where I find a very slight issue. I can move the mouse very, very slowly, and it won't track, whereas mice like the Rosa Basilisk will. Not a huge issue, but something that could be improved. Once it's moving though, it does track smoothly, and I didn't actually notice this in game, it was only in my testing. For acceleration, not an accurate test, but it looks good to me. And the weight is throwing me off a little. I'm not sure if I can feel a delay or not. I'm leaning toward maybe a slight one. It has a liftoff distance of about 2 DVDs on cloth and hard pads, and it seems to track on all different pads, from coloured, black, hard, and even a white desk. In the line test, it performs well. I can't see any skipping, angle snapping, or jittering. As for the buttons, despite the top of the shell being removable, they feel quite good. Here's a listen. Left and right have a nice snap to them, with only a slight spongy feel on the way down, with just enough tension to prevent accidental clicks while remaining light. Middle click is harder to press in, it feels quite tight, and the wheel feels fairly smooth, but still with some steps. It's quite good. Actually, Razor wheels have improved a lot, so credit to them for that. The side buttons feel mushy and a bit plasticky. They're okay, but not a strong point on the mouse. Even the DPI button feels like more of a button. Overall, I'm fairly happy with them, but they could be made better, of course. In the latency testing, there seems to be about a 7 to 12 millisecond delay compared with the Logitech G903 and G703. The overall build is quite good with only a slight rattle on the wheel when shaking it. It disappears if I hold it in. And the three fairly big mouse feet glide smoothly. Also on the base you see the switch from Bluetooth to wireless. And because it is wireless and Bluetooth, it needs batteries. Two double A's which puts it over 110 grams in use. Apparently you can get lighter batteries, so maybe that's worth looking into. But because of the positioning, it does feel a bit unbalanced. In the software, it shows you can add Razor Hypershift, switch left and right handed for the buttons, or you can give them different functions like keyboard, other mouse, sensitivity for DPI stages, and macro with an editor, although I couldn't find a way to record the mouse wheel, and then some others too, including multimedia. The DPI goes from 200 to 7200, and in steps of 100, which will always round up. You can set up to 5 stages for each profile, and that means it has onboard memory, so you only have to set it up once, then you can uninstall Synapse. To save battery that haven't gone with the LEDs on this one, it's only got one for communication. To conclude, the weight is the biggest drawback of the mouse, especially with the imbalance. And that's why I'd like to see a wired version. Wired, low weight, and reduce the wings at the back a bit, and this could actually be a top mouse, especially for small hands. For its intended use though, as a mobile gaming mouse, you wouldn't be using this in competitive play anyway. For a small, easy to move around mouse that tracks well on multiple surfaces, and buttons that suit all game types, it's a great option. But I think it could reach a high rank in my top 
40 as a competitive mouse with the changes I mentioned. That's not to say I didn't have some good plays with it. I could just do a lot better with those changes. Hope that helps. Big thanks to Rosa for sending it out for review. And if you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave the usual links in the description. Subscribe, like and share this video, and I'll catch you in the next.